Hello, everybody. We're back. It's us again. Dinner's going to be a little late tonight. I'm John. I'm Patty. Welcome. Oh, shoot. <laughs> There we go. Ah, we get to ride the directions. Anyway, uh, hi. <laughs> okay, stop, stop, stop. Anyway, welcome. The dinner's going to be a little late tonight. We, this week, are going to make something that I've been making for years and um, really enjoy. And my friends always ask for the recipe. And it's my white chicken chili. I'm excited. I've been putting on Instagram and Facebook today. I've never made, I make, you know, regular, like more traditional red chili with beef and pork, but I've never made white chicken chili or chili with white beans or with chicken. So I'm excited. It's got some of my favorite ingredients in it, my favorite spices. So I'm excited. It's from your book, which I heard rumor is coming out. Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. Look, look, here it is. I have a cookbook. Imagine that. And this recipe is in this cookbook. Awesome. So exciting. And Patty, Patty was my um, editor, so she helped to make sure everything looks good. So thank you, Patty. You're very welcome. And please, if you find any typos or grammatical errors, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. So a funny thing about this chili recipe, um, the first time I ever had white chicken chili was um, at my dad's house after my mom passed away. And my mom was hilarious. She, you know, had cancer and she knew she was she was going to be gone. And so she said, Jonathan, mark my words. On the day I'm gone, the ladies will be at the door with the casseroles. And and sure enough, sure enough, there they were, like wanting to, to, to say hi to my dad and bring a casserole. And one of them brought white chicken chili. And so of course she was my favorite after that. And um, and so I've been making it ever since. So this is where you got the recipe? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it inspired um, a love of white chicken chili. And so from there, I made this recipe out. Okay. Well, so, I have to say, first of all, your dad was smoking hot. So I'm not surprised about the casserole ladies. And the same thing happened to my dad when my mom passed away. He moved into a retirement community. And it was so bad, he moved. Not lying, he literally moved to a different place to live because they would not leave him alone. So well, these ladies were very, very sweet, and and eventually everyone became friends, and it was wonderful, and we got a lot of good food out of it. I thought you were going to say your mom made you make sure that you had the white chicken chili on that day, or that you made it for your dad. Or <laughs> yeah, no. no, it was the casserole, ladies. <laughs> Watch out. Anyway, what did we do last week, Patty? We made beef stroganoff, which. Speaking of mothers, the two weeks before when we were talking about beef stroganoff, I think I shared how awful my mother's was and how it was just disgusting. And John's mother's, of course, was fantastic. It was a fantastic recipe we made, and um, it's gone. We, we all ate it, licked the plate. It was, it, was, it was delicious. And super easy, super easy, held well. And I made it with filet, so that was delicious, but you can use a lot of different cuts of meat. Really great recipe. So that's last week, this week, and then at the end of today's show, we're going to tell you about next week, because next week's going to be super special and fun. But let's go down to some white chicken chili. Okay, so the key to this chili, this white chicken chili, is that everything's white. Go figure. So you use chicken, and you use um, chicken broth, and you use cream. There's a little bit of cream. Yeah. And um, maybe maybe a little bit more than a little, um, but the cream is makes it so delicious. Monterey Jack cheese in the chili and um, cannellini beans, which are white navy beans. So instead of that sort of kidney bean, dark hamburger meat with the tomato sauce, this one is um, chicken broth and cream based. And so it's a very white color afterwards. And um, it's really creamy delicious. I love it. I'm All right, what are we starting? We're, so um, there's a couple of hacks for this recipe, and I'm going to tell you about them as we go through. But first, we're going to saute uh, an entire onion in a half a stick of butter. Actually, first, we're going to take a sip of wine, but I'm right, I'm right back. Right. <laughs> so, oh, I have to tell you about my spoon. Have I told you about this spoon? No. It looks like a wooden spoon. Martha's 
Stewart. Martha Stewart gave me this one. Well, not really. It was a gift of purchase. But I like to tell people. I like to tell people that Martha Stewart gave me this book because she technically did. Technically, she gave me this book. Wouldn't you love to meet Martha Stewart? I don't. I don't like. I don't like the whole Martha Stewart. Like everything has to be perfect, and she's so pinched and like. But but I want to hear the stories about jail. I want to hear what happened. You know, stuff went down. You know, she was the center of some drama. She's very funny. She's very funny and she's a little edgier than you might think. I also want to share with you, Sate, my new dishcloth that I got. It says, People I Want to Meet, number one, dogs. What does it say? People I Want to Meet, number one, dogs. Love it. Okay, so we are off and running. We are um, sauteing these onions in butter until they get a little bit soft. Um, and um, I'm going to put the garlic in too, so two cloves of garlic. And we're just going to stir that up with Martha's wooden spoon here that she gave me because she loves me so much. Not to be trash talking, she won't. No. I, well, she's a little pinched, but she's going to have great stories from prison. So I want to know all about it. Like, I am all about that. Um, so. One of the things that we did in preparation for today, and the recipe calls for cooked chicken. And I used Purdue Farms chicken, and it comes cubed. Chicken, um, boneless chicken, boneless, skinless chicken breast, already cubed. And so I just cooked it up real quick before it, this, and you can see it's like all, all ready to go. Um, but here's a hack. If you don't even wanna do that, if it's like too much trouble to even cook the chicken in advance, you can just buy one of those roasted chickens from the grocery store and, and just pull the meat off and use that in the, in, in the chili because it's already cooked, it's already delicious, and then you don't even have to take that step. You can literally just have that chicken right off fat and ready to go. So a lot of variations with this dish, and that's what makes it so versatile. My family loves this so much that they request it all year long. But it is one of those things that, you know, when it's chilly out or when it's winter or when you want to wear your sweaters and your boots, it kind of goes along with, um, with that, you know, holidays and winter and colder weather. Chilly, you know, just does. Watching football games, because I know you do that a lot, John. Yeah, me. Yeah, that's, that's me. I watch a lot of football. <laughs> Are you going to watch the football game? The day what? after Thanksgiving, our alma mater is playing. It's the big game. The day what? after Thanksgiving. You gotta well, watch I would maybe watch that. Okay, so the onions and the garlic are in here, and they're simmering, and now I'm going to put in the chicken. And it's a pound and a half of chicken breast that I've already cooked. And again, like you, you can... You can do a number of different things with it. You can use chicken strips. You can buy the roasted chicken from the grocery store. But I like to do it this way. All right, so another thing that this recipe calls for, and in the, in the cookbook, I take a shortcut because the cookbook is for people who um, are trying to get a meal on the table quickly, don't have a lot of um, resources or ingredients, I should say. And so I, in the cookbook, say to use this, taco mix. Okay, because that's the hack. Okay, so taco mix is basically all the things, all the spices that you need to put into a chili like this. Um, and it includes the cumin and the chili powder and the pepper and all that other stuff. And so it's all in here. And so that's another hack. If you just, again, like, hey, I'm just trying to pull, put this thing together really fast. If you use the chicken already from the store and you use the taco seasoning and, and a couple other these shortcuts I'm going to tell you about, this thing will come together in 20 minutes. I mean, you're like, boom, and you're done. That's the beauty of this dish. Of course, I like to make it and have it cooking for on the, on the stove for a while because the longer you cook it, the t more tender the chicken gets. And this is a dish that I make every Halloween. 
And we usually have a huge Halloween party at our house. I mean, like huge. All the neighbors and the kids and, you know, it kept growing over the years. And at one point, I think there were 60 people in our house. Um, and I made this enormous, enormous pot. Well, I actually made two pots of it. And cornbread and salad and all those things go really well together. All right. Are you ready for the next? Are you, do you have your chicken in, Patty? Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm okay. ready. Let's roll. So we're cooking it about five minutes, and now we're gonna um, we're gonna add the chicken broth. So we've got four cups of chicken broth, and again, um, you know, I don't know where you get your chicken broth. Some people make it from scratch, and and it's actually quite delicious when you do that. Um, and the, 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 there's another shortcut if you get um, better than bouillon, which is sort of a bouillon and in a jar. And it makes chicken broth, so it's like a teaspoon of those bouillon makes a cup of broth. And I use that um, because I don't have time to make this chicken broth from scratch. Or, you know, it's also gets kind of expensive to buy those, those containers of chicken broth already made in the soup section. So I get this and it works really well. So I've put in the chicken broth and we're going to let that come to a boil. And we're going to start adding the spices now, Patty. Okay, so again, if you're if you're if you want to do the shortcut, use the taco seasoning. We're doing the um, regular. <laughs> See, she's got it too. We're doing the regular. So um, I've got two teaspoons of chili powder and one teaspoon of cumin. You say cumin or cumin, Patty? I think cumin. Cumin. I think cumin. You said cumin. That sounds better. I think cumin. I don't know. So. It, so I'm going to throw these in, both of those at the same time. I measure. That's going to start to make this. Mm, and now it starts to smell spicy and delicious. I think cumin is my favorite spice. Really? Oh my god, I just love it. Like I'm smelling it right now. Like I want a cumin candle. Well, and here's another thing you can do at home. If you like a spicier chili, just add more of those spices. And put a little red pepper flakes in and it'll give it a kick or cayenne um, and you know some people like spicy i like it spicy but i'm i'm showing you the basic and then you can always add to it however you like because patty's husband does not like spicy we're not very spicy here <laughs> well so speaking of spicy so last not last week but the week before when we made the pozole julia my friend, she just posted a picture of her pozole on our Facebook, and she told me yesterday that um, she added a pepper, and I can't remember which one it was. Check it out on our Facebook. But I love that. So the funniest thing was she was serving it to her partner, and before he could take a bite, she said, wait, I have to take a picture. I said, oh, remember, Insta eats first. I love it. I love it. Well, I saw that picture, and yeah. it looked delicious. And I think she added cayenne. I think that's what she said. But um, she she wanted it spicy, and and I like it that way too, Julia. Yeah. Okay. So this is starting to cook up, and um, while we wait for this to boil, um, Patty, do you have any stories to share? <laughs> you know, I did not come up with any clever repartee for this. <laughs> You did not research the origin of chili or um, where chicken comes from or how how cumin is ground by hand by ancient um, old ladies in the Appalachians or something. Exactly. Like that. No, no? no a great wine pairing, but we'll do that in a second. Hi, Elise. Your friend. Elise. Oh, hey, Elise is here. Hey, Elise. I'm so glad you joined us. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Okay, so Elise was, um, I think Elise and I became friends because of our friends Rachel and Zippy, I think. Is that right, Elise? Um, because she was watching me make pineapple upside down cake <laughs> with them on their show, <laughs> which was a lot of fun. But anyway, um, okay, so we've got this going, and now we're going to add the white beans. Okay. Now, I've got cannellini beans here. Me too. Um, and cannellini beans are, that's an Italian bean um, and um, this is basically a white kidney bean with an Italian zing to it but I love these beans I actually cook with these a lot 
and we'll, we'll have another recipe using these beans another time. Um, that's right, Elise is reminding me um, that we met because of the Compass Girls. And if you've never watched their programs, they're hilarious. I mean, they're, I mean, they do cooking programs and a bunch of other things, and those two ladies kill me, they're so funny. So the Compass Girls, if you want something fun to watch. Okay, so I'm, I'm putting in, and this is two cans. Just, you know, again, we're making this really easy on you guys. Two cans of cannellini beans. You can use white kidney beans. You can use pinto beans, which are also white-ish. Uh, you can, there's a lot of different kinds of white colored beans. And if you're feeling really fancy, and sometimes people are, sometimes you're just feeling it, you can make this from scratch, and I have done that before, where I get the dry beans and I soak them overnight, oh, wow. and then they swell up, and then I cook the beans um, in the morning, because they have to cook for hours, um, and then I, you know, then I have this big batch of delicious beans from scratch, and that actually makes, that, that actually makes an amazing, amazing, amazing um, chili. It's just that it takes a while, so we're using shortcuts. I do have a I do have a bean story, oddly enough. So, John, have you ever forgotten to rinse the beans before you cook them? Yes. <laughs> and we know what happens, don't we? You know where this is going? When Scott and I were, I think, I don't even think we were married yet. We were first dating. He had a friend from work who invited us for dinner. And, of course, you know, in our late 20s, we just thought that was so cool. Someone was going to go to our house and cook us dinner. And he made this delicious dish. And he didn't rinse the beans. And let's just say yesterday, the next day was very uncomfortable. So, yeah. So, so it's important to rinse the beans. It, 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 it speeds the digestions <laughs> when you don't rinse the beans. So it's always a good idea to rinse them. Yeah. That's I thought you were going to say another story about how um, I didn't rinse them one time. And sometimes they have little rocks in them. Oh, no. And, and I ended up with a... Or, uh, and I, I, so I swear I thought I chipped my tooth, but I didn't. But I swear <laughs> I thought I did. Oh, man. Oh, look, Elise, Elise says she's forgotten to rinse her beans, too. <laughs> yeah, it's like... I know. Oh, I'm I'm Everyone's, it's, like, it's like running out of gas. Everyone's done it once, right? <laughs> and, and, and that's not a mistake you'll make twice, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we're going to add the chilies. So it's a can of Ortega chilies, and you can go mild or you can go spicy. Maybe Julia would like the spicy, but I went mild, and it's they're already chopped, and you don't even need to drain the can. You just put the whole thing in. So again, I put it in a pretty bowl so that you would think I was fancy, but really honestly, you just take the can and you dump it in. Like what I just did. <laughs> <laughs> what? Have you put the refried beans in yet? Yes, now we're gonna do the refried beans. Okay, okay, so that's the secret which makes this chili happen so quickly. Because normally, you know, a chili recipe, you'd have it on the stove, cooking on low for a really long time, and it would slowly cook down and turn into a thick, delicious chili. Like, and have a consistency that was kind of thick. But this is going quick. Oh, Patty, you know what we forgot? The secret ingredient. I just poured mine into my cup. I'm ready. Okay, so in the in the cookbook, guys, they had that. They asked me to take some um, shortcuts, and one of them was they didn't. They weren't really big on me calling out alcohol as an ingredient in any of the recipes. The publisher was like, "Let's not do that. Let's like you know people may be uncomfortable with you know cooking with alcohol or anything. So let's just okay. not use." They may be uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm like, have you, do you know who we are? This is, this yeah. is <laughs> have we met? But anyway, <laughs> so in my recipe, not the book recipe, but the secret recipe I'm sharing with you just right now, we cook with beer. What kind of beer? So, so we put a half a cup of beer into the chili because it adds kind of a fun, kind of malty, yeasty flavor to it. And Patty was bringing up like when you're watching a football game or when you're just, um, you know, a, 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 you're drinking beer and beer and chili just kind of go together, don't they? Sure. 
So I, John told me, you know, it's not on the recipe. It's not on the cookbook, but we need beer. And I was like, Scott and I don't really drink beer. Where's some beer? Well, as I think you know, if you've been watching, go Julia. <laughs> She's fighting for me with lots of alcohol. That's why she's my friend. Um, so anyway, so as you know, if you know, Psalm Sydney flew the coop went back to New York. So I'm like, oh gosh, do we have any beer? And the weirdest thing, I went in her room, which was the guest room and is now becoming the guest room again. And there was a case of beer in her room. So thanks, Sam Sid. She even had the beer for the recipe in her bedroom this morning. And you know, Stella is my favorite beer. Is it? Well, yeah. when you come visit, I've got a case. <laughs> I love it. But I really like to order it in a place that knows how to serve it properly because they they, they take the quaff and they, and they even it off the top and there's a whole ritual a certain glass that stella is already always served in wow so elise is saying yep she's she's good with the beer <laughs> love that elise thank you well beer you know beer and breweries and have are like wine now you can get flights and tastings and go to the brewery it's really cool my son is really into that i went to a beer tasting and it was beer and chocolate and I know that sounds really weird, but it was amazing. It was amazing to, to have the two things together. Um, and I never would have thought they went together, but they did beautifully. Okay, so back to the refried beans. Okay. Um, we're adding a can of refried beans into the chili. And the reason is, not only are they sort of white, which they are sort of white, but they're gonna make it nice and thick. Um, so it doesn't have to cook all day um, on the stove and cook down and all that stuff. The the refried beans are actually going to thicken it for us. So that's one of the reasons why we put it in, because it's a hack. That's the best hack. When I was looking at the rest of the outline, that is so brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, Julia, I, have, I, don't, <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Why do they call it that? You can't just put that up there, Julia, and not tell us why. It's so I'm doing the wife beater, the white yeah. top while he's drinking his Stella. Yeah. Well, I run upstairs and get my wife. All right, Ju Julia, come on. Got to hear it. Well, type that <laughs> she's, she's Googling right now. Quick, Google. All right. All right. Um, so we've got the green chilies and we're going to cook this for a couple of minutes until everything starts to combine really nicely. The, the uh, refried beans are starting to thicken this up a bit. Yum. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. What'd she say? Oh, she's saying like, Oh, because like if you drink too much, Oh, uh, I thought there was a whole story behind it. Like, like it was like, you know, you had to wear your wife beater, um, like, you know, tank top. To... Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. Well, that's not so pleasant, Julia. God. All right. So <laughs> another um, secret ingredient. Um, it's in the recipe in the book too, but we're going to add a cup of Monterey Jack cheese. And again, that's gonna just thicken it a little bit for us. So it's gonna make it kind of a little bit um, cheesy and a little bit thicker and it starts to bind all the ingredients together. And I don't know if you've ever cooked, like put like cheese or in any of you, I sometimes I'll put Parmesan cheese into my pasta, like into my spaghetti sauce. I hate to call it spaghetti sauce. In our family, we call it sugo, but it thickens it and it gives it a really delicious kind of flavor. So we just put that in. And the last thing we're gonna put in is the cream. Are you ready, Are you ready for that? I'm always ready to add the cream. So now we're gonna put a half a cup of heavy cream. Now you can, you can cheat if you want. And if you're not, if you're feeling like, you know, diet-ish or you're trying to watch calories, I get it. I totally get it. So you can use half and half, you can use milk, you can use sour cream, you can use plain yogurt. Like it's just about having some sort of white dairy item in this to make it even creamier and whiter. So this is all kind of combining up into this kind of really beautiful and delicious white soupy chili. 
And while it cooks for a little bit, Patty, yes. why don't you tell us a little bit about our wine pairing. Oh, okay. don't forget the salt and pepper. I'll salt and pepper. I'll salt and pepper and then I'll talk about wine. So I have two wine recommendations this week from Song Sydney from New York, but we have a local angle because Desert Wine Shop on Highway 111 in Palm Desert is our go-to wine store. And you know, we want to support our local businesses. And when Sydney first came out back on March 15th, when she thought she was going to be here for two weeks, she and my husband went to the Desert Wine Shop and got into the terrifying habit of buying about a case of wine a week because that's what we needed to survive. So I got the information from Sydney, went over and saw Katie, who is the sommelier at the Desert Wine Shop, and she and Cliff hooked me up yesterday. So I said, Sydney, I told her the recipe. She said, definitely something from Spain. So the first one, I'm not opening it because this is, this is a little bit fancier. This is not Wednesday night wine for me. This is a Castro Candaz, and this is a Mencia. And the cool thing about both of these wines, they're from Spain, they're, they're varietals from Spain, but they have a corresponding California varietal that for those of us who, you know, were, were I was gonna say raised on California wine. Well, I mean, not like super young. Um, anyway, so the, the deal is if you love Pinot Noir, Try Mencia. It's a medium bodied red. It's got some great peppercorn spice and herb qualities. Like we're going to talk about it later. So Sydney says this will pair nicely, but won't overpower the chili ingredients. And like John was saying about beer and chocolate, that's, this is the coolest thing about wine. I never liked Sauvignon Blanc and I'm not a big fish eater. And I went to one of those wine pairing dinners at a local restaurant. And one of the courses was a Sauvignon Blanc with a, a nice, beautiful white fish. And I tasted the wine and I tasted the fish. And I was like, this is insane. And I looked at my friend's husband who was sitting next to me and we both had the same aha moment at the same time. We both looked at each other and went like, I get it. I get the wine pairing, the food pairing. So that's the first one, the red, the Mencio. And you can, Mencia. And so you can get that at Desert Wine Shop. They do ship, look them up, Desert Wine Shop, Katie and Cliff. So Elise is asking if you would include a link. So Elise, we'll, we'll follow up and add that to the stream after the show so that there'll be a link and you can check it out or even order it. Yes, thanks Elise, that's awesome. So this one, oh, this one's, someone's been drinking this. This is the Godello and this is also from Spain. And I picked this one from Sydney's recommendations because my friend John likes Chardonnay. And this was one of those like, if you like Chardonnay, you'll like Godello. What commercial was that? I meant to look that up. I don't you like Chardonnay? You don't I like Chardonnay. Hate Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really, really don't like Chardonnay. And I have had a few that I actually enjoyed and it usually, usually because someone guided me through it and, and it, I do not like oaky right. Chardonnay. So this is from Spain. It's not a California Napa oaky buttery. It's not Rombauer. It's beautiful. So it's got a bigger body, ripe round citrus, followed again by those green herb notes. Not too much acid to compete with the dish. The cool it's thing. Very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's drinking the same wine right now, an hour and a half away from me. But the cool thing about this winery was. A lot of people in the late, I love this, the latter part of the 20th century. Doesn't that sound like history? No, that was just like. Okay, no. Elise is like my long lost sister and I need to know her because see, she also doesn't like Chardonnay. I love this one. Elise is probably just like you that she has not had some Chardonnays. You got that mindset that it's just the California Chardonnay. We're gonna work on this because I don't give any of that kind of Chardonnay anymore. Well, and I've done I've done wine tastings with wineries that they send me wine because of the blog, and they'll send me um, bottles of wine, and then we'll do this wine tasting, and it comes to the Chardonnay, and I'm like, mm, that's very good. Well, and I'm like, I, I, it's like they've been so kind; they've sent these wines, and I've liked all of them. They've all been delicious, except for. <laughs> well, except don't to, you know? It's like anything. Do you like what you like? Well, anyway, what I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted was. <laughs> 
a lot of so this is a this was a oh, good thing. okay go back and stir go back and stir um so in the 70s a lot of uh wineries were ripping out their old vineyards or their old vines and replacing them with grapes that were more pop production and in fashion like chardonnay but instead of taking out the Godeo, the head of the region's agricultural office up in northern Spain spearheaded a program in 1974 to reinvent the grape. And this is what he said. This is our heritage. And so we owe it to ourselves and our future, future generations to protect ancient varieties like Godeo. So here's to Godeo. Oh, like don't, don't you love that? Yeah. Pretend I didn't even say the thing about Chardonnay. Just try a Godeo. I think you'll like it. Yeah, let's just not even say, like, not even mention Chardonnay. And, you know, honestly, you know how things are so psycho. Like, if you, you never said Chardonnay and said, oh, this is a delicious wine, I would love it. Right? Mm -hmm. If you said, oh, it's like Chardonnay, I'm immediately like, I don't like it. You have, like, PTSD about Chardonnay. <laughs> I'm scarred. I'm scarred for life. <laughs> I've got some bad Chardonnay. All right, enough about Chardonnay. Ooh, yum. How long till dinner? Okay, it's done. Time. I mean, it's been done for a while. You've been chatting it up, and I'm over here stirring, and it's done. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so part of the fun of this dish is all the cool things you get to put on top of the chili. And I don't know about you, but it's like, Sometimes if you go to an Indian restaurant or you make Indian curry and you get to put all those fun things on top, coconut and raisins and peanuts and all those other things that you get to put on top of of, of cook curry, traditional Madras curry from, in, from India, that's like this. So I don't know if you can see this, but I made it all pretty. It's pretty and all. So this is fun because you can put a lot of different things on top of the chili. If I tip this too much, all these things are gonna slide off. But can you see it? So I have um, chunky salsa, um, like um, salsa cruda or um, pico de gallo. I have sour cream. I have Monterey Jack cheese. I have um, chopped up green onions. I have chopped up cubed um, avocado, fresh avocado. And I have um cilantro leaves so oh fun thing about cilantro i think some people like it and some people don't right patty i we'll have it too say See, what i have two yeah you have it too i'm afraid yeah. to i'm not tilting evidently some people have a gene that triggers um their taste buds to taste cilantro differently than other people and, and, and so to some people, it tastes like soap. It tastes terrible. It's, it's a very, very distinctly bad flavor in their mouth. I don't have that gene. Ouch. Patty, do you have that gene? I do not. But, I, you know, Sydney, I don't know if she still does, but she didn't like cilantro. So I wonder if she has that gene. I love cilantro. That's right up there with cumin. Yeah, I mean, I love it too. But, you know, I mean, cilantro is one of those, it's, it's, a, it's polarizing. It's a polarizing thing. You either like it or you don't. There's no in between, right? Yes. Okay, so this is done. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ladle um, some of it into this bowl. Yeah, yeah I want to stop. I mean, that happened fast, right? I mean, we were talking it up, but that came together really fast. And that's the beauty of this dish, is that it should come together nice and quick for you. And now I'm going to take a spoon and I'm going to put some of these things on top. So I'm going to put some cilantro leaves and I'm going to, I'm going to put some more cheese because I love cheese. Ooh. And I'm going to put some green onions mm -hmm. and some avocado. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably going to put a little sour cream because everything tastes better with sour cream. Mm -hmm. And maybe some salsa cruda. Salsa cruda is also known as pico de gallo. Okay, and there it is. Okay. Yeah. All done. I, did, I don't have any. My pico de gallo is in the refrigerator. But there so, you go. Yum. So one of the things that's so great about this dish is that it um, refrigerates great. Right? So you can make a big batch of it, put it in the refrigerator, have it for lunch the next day or dinner a couple days later, and it freezes great. 
So oftentimes this giant pot of chili that we just made is just too much for our family to consume all in one sitting. And you know, after a while you're like, okay, enough with the chili. So you put it in a, um, a Tupperware and put it in the freezer. And then, you know, it keeps up to like maybe three months. You, you can take it out, thaw it out and have chili again. Sometimes if I'm feeling, you know, really Martha Stewart, I'll put it in little containers in the freezer so that it's like single servings and you can just take it out and zap it in the microwave and have a little chili for lunch or whatever. So that's when I'm feeling very, very organized. So I don't know. Today we'll see. But that's it. White chili. So get the cookbook and you can follow along or I'm going to post the recipe to our blog. And so you'll be able to get that later this afternoon and you can watch the video and be terribly entertained by us, but the recipe itself will tell you exactly how to make the chili. All right. I can't wait to try it. Dinner will be early. Um, so it'll be a little early tonight. <laughs> well, we, we got to watch the bachelorette. So we want to start early. That's a story for another day. So, well, so did they, didn't they get a new bachelorette? Like something yeah. happened? That's an aside. The most important thing, exciting thing about the bachelorette is it is being, it was filmed at La Quinta Resort, which is right down the street. John, you know and love this resort, right I down the street where we live. And the most exciting part is my husband's a contractor and he did a big remodel there and he did not know what he was doing it for. It was all secret. So now we watch it every week to go, <gasps> Those are the pavers that Scott did. Scott designed that bench. Oh, Scott put in that. You know, so whatever happened, Scott did it. So it's very exciting. And apparently Sydney texted this morning that there's something very exciting. But what's more exciting, honestly, in my small world, as I'm, we are so excited about not next Wednesday because we're not going to have a show next Wednesday because it's the day before Thanksgiving. So two things. Next Wednesday, we won't have a show, but I'm going to be making my pumpkin cheesecake, which is literally one of my family's absolute favorite things I make. We're not going to do a live show, but I'll be doing a story and I'll be providing the recipe on the blog or on our Facebook. So, um, but you'll be able to see the steps. So that'll, that'll be kind of a fun thing to check out on Wednesday. It's so good. I've had Thanksgiving at Patty's house before and that pumpkin cheesecake is better than any pumpkin pie I've ever had. Thank you. And, and, I it, pumpkin pie. and it makes an outstanding breakfast on Thanksgiving morning or the day yeah. after Thanksgiving. So the, awesome. so on Saturday, which is the 28th, two days after Thanksgiving, we are going to have our first live cook along. So next week, I'm going to give you the ingredients. Well, I'll probably this weekend, I'll give you the ingredients for my mother's turkey soup. And you've heard about John's mother's fantastic recipes. This is one of my mom's absolute stellar recipes. It is the best turkey soup I've ever had in my life. And there are a couple different ingredients that, because I was looking at some other recipes and there she definitely, she had some of her own Patty Finn spin on this recipe. So what we're hoping you can do if you want, otherwise you can do the, the tr traditional, watch it, make it later. But if you want on Saturday afternoon at one o'clock, you'll have all your ingredients assembled and we'll make it together and then you'll have this fabulous batch of turkey soup ready to go Saturday afternoon or evening for dinner, because by then you might be sick of the turkey sandwiches and the rerun of the turkey dinner. Or like John said about this, it freezes beautifully. So look, look for information about that on our Instagram and on our Facebook, on our story and on our posts. And I hope you'll join us live for our first live cook along. I love this idea and I cannot wait to try this soup. You've been raving about the soup for years and finally I'm going to be making it with you. So save the carcass, right? Save, save the carcass. carcass. Yes. Save your carcass. That is the secret. Cause like John is talking about making your own broth or stock this, that's one of the things you definitely want to do with this recipe is you want to make your own stock from your carcass, save your carcass. And if you don't, if you're not making a turkey, find a neighbor or a friend who is and ask if you can have your carcass because yes, I have done that. I have gone to other people's homes for Thanksgiving dinner and been like, um, you, you gonna eat that carcass? <laughs> oh no, you're that woman. I am, I'm the, I'm the carcass stealer. <laughs> well, you've gotta be famous for something other than this show. So you can also be famous for 
being the carcass woman. <laughs> so Elise wants to know, oh, so it's, dinner's a little late. Elise, it's just like it says right here. Our Instagram is dinner's a little late. And that goes for everybody. Please follow us, share, share your comments, share your photos of your meals. If you try our recipes, when you pick up John's book, um, we would love to hear from you. It's great. So fun. So thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you not next Wednesday. We'll see you on Saturday live for a cook along to make Patty's mom's famous turkey soup, right? Yep. And it's okay. a we're gonna we're gonna post the ingredients in advance so that if you want, you can go to the store and buy them and cook along with us. Is that right, Patty? Yes. And what you can do is just when you if you are doing a turkey dinner, Thanksgiving dinner. It's mostly the same ingredients. So you can just double the order, lots of carrots, lots of celery, lots of onions, um, and make sure, you, but anyway, yeah, we're gonna do that. So super simple. And we'll get all that out to you by Saturday because it'll be one week away. Awesome. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll see you soon. Have a happy holiday if we don't talk before then. And thanks so much for watching our show. We're so thrilled to have you here. And um, dinner's gonna be a little late tonight. Thanks so much. Take care. Be safe. Bye, guys. Thanks for coming.